considered as a possible answer to the question of personal transportation, the Sinclair C-5 was an unusual but highly prescient attempt to present the buying public with an electrically powered means of mobility, though despite selling over 17,000 examples, this icon of 1980s outside-the-box thinking is more often remembered today as a commercial failure, though what was once a joke back then is a fascinating obscurity now. The Sinclair C-5 was born during a turbulent period for the transport industry, as following the oil crises of 1973 and 1979, the reliance of global mobility on fossil fuels was clearly demonstrated as extremely vulnerable based on political factors, as well as the ever-present issue of finite resources that would need to be transplanted by a more permanent solution. Stepping up to the challenge of creating a potential future for the automotive industry was English entrepreneur and inventor Sir Clive Sinclair, a pioneer during the early days of the British and European home computing industry, and found success with revolutionary inventions such as the ZX Spectrum, an 8-bit home computer that was launched in 1982 and remains today as Britain's best-selling computer, as well as being often considered one of the most important milestones in the development of modern computers and video games. Other innovations within Sinclair's resume included early video games, pocket radios and pocket calculators, the success of his many ventures within the electronics and computing industry, leading him to pursue an interest in affordable electric vehicles, his intention being to develop a form of everyday mobility that would break the reliance of the automotive industry on fossil fuels. Sinclair Vehicles Limited was thus founded in 1983 on the back of his keen interest in EVs, with the capital used to establish this firm being generated through the £8.6 million sale of his shares in Sinclair Research, the magnate hoping that his move into the realm of electric vehicles would be the first step into an untapped market ripe with demand, and that from an initially small-scale project, the commercial returns on this investment would lead to a wider range of models to be sold to the general public. Sinclair considered three models for his new electric vehicle range, the C5 electric tricycle, the C10 two-seater car, and the C15 four-seater car, the latter two being capable of achieving a top speed of 80 miles an hour. Initially, the C5 would be developed first as essentially a pilot study into the demand for EVs, this model comprising a three-wheeled configuration with a body built from polypropylene. While the chassis was developed in conjunction with the renowned car builder Lotus, Sinclair purchasing a former vacuum cleaner factory in Merthyr Tydfil, Wales, as the main assembly plant for the upcoming C5. The general design of the C5 would accommodate a single occupant, who would sit in a recumbent position in an open cockpit, while underneath the driver's knees would be a handlebar that controlled the steering, and also included the power switch as well as a bicycle style front and rear brake lever. The occupant's feet would rest on bicycle-style pedals that acted as a supplement to electric power, this combination of human power and a 250-watt electric motor being able to drive the C5 to a maximum speed of 15 miles an hour and a range of 20 miles. However, problems emerged early on due to Sinclair's assumption that, in the wake of the 1979 oil crisis, there was an immediate and overwhelming demand for electric vehicles, especially among low-income families. Thus, without having undertaken a comprehensive market research study prior to developing the C5, the only time any member of the public was introduced to the prototype was during a focus group involving 63 families from suburban and town environments, aiming to confirm if the vehicle's handlebar controls were correctly positioned. Therefore, on January 10th, 1985, the Sinclair C5 made its public debut at a ceremony held at London's Alexandra Palace, with six C5s being flamboyantly paraded in front of the assembled media, though immediately, critical reviews of the EV, both in terms of its looks, concept and driving experience, were scathing, and the machine was considered something of a joke from the day it was launched. At the same time, the batteries of the six demonstrator units continually failed during the ceremony, and those journalists reviewing the machine found that due to the low-seated driving position, using the pedals to manually propel the C5 was not the most intuitive process, especially when attempting to haul the comparatively heavy tricycle up the inclines of Alexandra Palace in the freezing cold of a British January, while also taking into account the weight of the incapacitated battery pack and electric motor. 
Aside from the disastrous launch of the C5, there were a myriad of practical problems with the machine that meant customer interest was practically non-existent, specifically the issue of crash safety, as the lightweight, low-slung electric tricycle had no rigid structure due to its polymer-based construction and could also not be seen by car drivers when operating in regular traffic. From the outset, the verdict on the C5 was one of overwhelming and universal criticism, with negative feedback being garnered from motoring organizations, road safety groups, consumer watchdogs, and the general public, with the teenage demographic, the expected target audience for the C5, showing absolutely no desire to want to buy the machine. Sinclair responded angrily to these complaints, and threatened to sue the British Safety Council after it issued a highly critical report on the C5 following a test conducted at the Sinclair Vehicles headquarters, his choice being to instead bypass the press and automotive journalists and present the C5 to the people at large through a public user experience day at the Murphy Tidville factory. This experience day worked wonders for the publicity of the C5, with over 20,000 people attending the event, many of whom responded positively to driving the C5, the 2,700 units from the first production run being completely sold out by the following Monday though only around 200 C5s had found homes by the end of the weekend. After this initial buzz, though, sales fell rapidly away, and by the time the C5 arrived in retail stores at the beginning of March 1985, demand for the machine was practically non-existent, with only 100 C5s being produced every week against a forecast assembly output of 1,000, this being compounded by various quality issues that brought a temporary halt to construction the result being over 3,000 unsold C5s lying piled up in storage at the Murphy Tidville plant, with additional unsold stock in 500 retail outlets nationwide. Initially, Sinclair was of the conviction that the C5's failure to sell was simply due to the fact that it had been launched in January, and that with the arrival of spring and summer, the EV would find greater success among the buying public, though this did not occur while due to the ever-present issue of safety and visibility to other drivers, motoring authorities overseas barred the sale of C5s internationally. Ultimately, by mid-1985, it was clear that the Sinclair C5 had been a huge misstep, and thus with no hope of seeing the EV regain any form of public interest, production was officially brought to a close, while the main retailer of the C5, Comet Electricals Limited, slashed the price of its unsold units from £399 or £1,100 in 2024, to £139.99, or £411 in 2024, so as to offload the final examples, Sinclair vehicles eventually collapsing into administration by the end of the year. However, while the Sinclair C5 was laughed off stage during its initial release, the machine garnered a surprising amount of interest from automotive speculators, who prophetically saw that such a notorious and strange-looking vehicle would one day reap a value far greater than its discount sales price when Sinclair vehicles admitted defeat in the summer of 1985. Thus, many were procured as collectibles based on their potential future return on investment, a move that reaped for many a substantial profit, especially in the wake of 1980s nostalgic trends during the 2000s and 2010s, with a basic C5 costing around £1,000, while C5 still in their original packaging as could be found inside Comet superstores up and down the country, often fetch a price up to and beyond £5,000, as do rare optional extras such as wing mirrors and high-visibility masts. In the end, the Sinclair C5 is an interesting cautionary tale as to why market research is the linchpin of a potentially successful product, as while this does not always guarantee a commercial breakthrough, it does, at the very least, provide a greater illustration of potential demand for a project than the sole convictions of one man based on simple observations and intuition. This was, therefore, the crux of the C5's failure, as with Sinclair being of the opinion that there was a thriving EV market just waiting to be tapped, he put into production a model that had not been tailored through customer clinics and safety assessments, but rather what he believed would appeal most of all to consumers, creating one of the most infamous automotive punchlines in history. However, The C5, as a staple of offbeat and often quirky 1980s thinking and style, has found a new audience in the 2000s and 2010s as perhaps one of the most iconic products of this decade, a time when entrepreneurship and a willingness to push through ideas to fruition, even when based on shaky foundations or intuition, 
was the order of the day, and is now able to garner a value that the scathing automotive journalists of yesteryear could never have imagined.